Hello everyone! You might be wondering, why are we doing Splatoon 2 again? Didn't we already do this game in 2017? Well, we've also done Sonic Mania four times since 2017, Three times. so that doesn't have anything to do with anything. <laughs> Three times. Three times. <laughs> get, the, get, the meme, get the meme right. <laughs> okay. Whatever. In any case, this is the Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion. Fun fact, that Splatoon 2 playthrough is so out of date, Octo Expansion hadn't even been announced yet. So, um, there's plenty of stuff to talk about how the game has changed in that time. But, if you aren't familiar with the Splatoon 2 DLC, basically how it works is that it's a $20 DLC campaign you buy on the eShop, and it is a huge collection of single-player levels and at the end, if you complete it, you can play as the Octoling in the single player mode. Not sorry, in the multiplayer mode. You oh. you just get to play as the Octoling in the single player just for just for having it. But <laughs> beating it unlocks Octolings in multiplayer, which is something people have been hacking in Splatoon One since 2016. But we don't need to worry about that part. Okay. Well, I mean, I've, I I'm surprised it's a single player expansion, to be honest. Well, there, there's not much. You, you don't want to make the multiplayer pay to win effectively. Yeah, which is what, I, um, what I'm what i glad for as well. Uh, Splatoon well, also did free DLC uh, updates for more, the multiplayer for like three full years. So. There's more you can do with multiplayer DLC than pay to win. Well, then it's just cosmetic stuff, which is, nah, Nintendo people tend to not buy. New maps, much. new modes... Games well, they, they gave those stuff. away for free, so they oh. didn't need to charge people. Yeah, because 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 they need they want to keep people playing and locking maps that pe all the paid people are going to go oh, to. I'm just kind surprised of they put money where... into a single player mode. I didn't get the ex, ex I didn't get the uh, I didn't get the feeling that many people cared about uh, Octo uh, about uh, Splatoon single player. I much prefer. I much prefer. I'm not a multiplayer guy, so I much prefer the single player campaigns, even for games like this. Well, I so do Splatoon too. Splatoon One single like, player is actually legitimately very, very good. I, 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 I especially. I associate shooter multiplayer modes with people who don't like single player. So I don't know. Maybe that's um, just me. no. Well, I feel like Splatoon has a somewhat different. Um, kind of thing Look, going on because i, <laughs> I have a, a i have a chip on my shoulder about the entire genre okay so uh, like I, i'm i'm probably wrong but it feels like i'm right <laughs> uh yeah I, I, you're I like definitely the, I like, wrong <laughs> i like the multiplayer for this game if it wasn't entirely team-based because it's one of it's one of those it's one of those things where i don't like my fun being entirely dictated by other people and whether or not the randos i team up with yeah i, I kind of <laughs> Feel the same so way. So it's either that or I have to find a crew and work together and find times that work for all like, of us and that's just kind of annoying as well. So Online randos have a tendency to not give a shit about your fun. So like that's fine if it's every man for himself in a competitive environment. Not so good for com uh, for co-op play. Like I, was, well, I once tried to play... Well, generally has a fairly um, casual feel to it for the most part. Like there is a competitive Splatoon scene and they are a really fun group but most people who play splatoon do play it casually just doing turf war and it kind of has a smash with items mario kart it kind really of feel doesn't matter to the multiplayer. what scene you're talking about when you're just doing random matchmaking the people you get matched with come from all the scenes and none of them care about you ever uh, <laughs> in any case uh cap and cuttlefish do you mind backing up yeah, that, that would be nice. Uh, who is yeah. this guy? Um, so he was your helper in the original Splatoon uh, campaign. So just kind of as a as a recap, since it has been a while, um, the original Splatoon's campaign, I think, was very, very good, partially because it does a great job introducing the mechanics and how the game kind of plays and its little quirks, as well as just being a really fun, competent platformer. Splatoon 2's single player campaign the base campaign is fine um it doesn't really have as much focus as the original games and the scent pieces aren't really quite there there's more replay value because you can do every level with every weapon but it's just not as good in kind of hard to quantify nitpicky little ways so this game kind of takes splatoon 2's multiplayer and gives it the focus not multiplayer, sorry, single player campaign and gives it the focus it really needs to be an excellent experience. 
Like Splatoon Octo is one of my favorite single player things on the Switch, period. It is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I would say playing this game, if you can get through the whole thing and beat the super boss at the end, which I'm doing for the record, you're probably good enough to get to S plus in the multiplayer uh, ranked at the very least, because this game is hard. Too. <laughs> it is not an easy game. Um, well, I mean, mm, difficulty in single player and difficulty in multiplayer are often two very different beasts. Um, that is true, but there are specific um, maps in this uh, single player campaign that are designed to emulate the experience of well, playing in multiplayer, particularly that super boss. So if you can beat the super boss, you probably can play ranked with the big kids. That's is a more just thing, what yeah. But like the thing that makes multiplayer difficult is the way that the human enemy, the human opponents, interact with the game and with you. Whereas in a single player, no matter how difficult you make it, it's always AI driven, and you're always going to figure the AI out eventually. Uh, <laughs> Unless if they're just overpowered as hell, which, which well, we'll, we'll, we'll get even, to. Even that, even that, when that happens, that's creating a different kind of challenge than what you're going to face against a human opponent. A very well, basically, kind of basic. What I'm just saying is, is that your reaction time is good enough to handle the big, the big kids mm. if you can beat yeah, the, that's fair um, the multiplayer. The God, I. I can't say the right words today. <laughs> if you can if you can beat the the super boss and everything in this, your reaction time is good enough to get to the highest ranks. I would say that like obviously you still need to learn the game and the maps and what weapons can do what, but that's also that's also something that this game does God, why because am I thinking the multiplayer of... gives you your um given every type of weapon to use over the course of the game. Yeah. So you do learn most of their little their little quirks as well Ooh, as you play. Why am I and you, thinking... you will probably find the ones you like the best after you what? do this why as well. Why am I thinking of Portal right now? Because uh, this game just has a lot of Portal vibes um, in general. Uh, in that you are a <laughs> you're a test subject locked in a post-apocalyptic weird test place and you need to find your way out because it's creepy and sketchy as hell. Um, huh. Only there's a subway tunnel Sketchy, as opposed huh. to just chrome ev everywhere. <laughs> Sketchy, yeah. Everything is chrome in the future. You say that and it's like the game is echoing you. Um... <laughs> yeah, no, this uh, this game is has a lot of really sketchy stuff going on, which I actually really like because Splatoon has had like kind of dark oaks and dark undercurrents in the main game and in some of the lore, but that's more just kind of fan in oh my gosh it's a post-apocalypse actually kind of way uh this brings a lot of that more into the forefront with the story uh, as well which gives the game its own kind of vibe but they also do it to kind of expand on some of the ideas that's in interesting the base because game too. i don't remember the story really going anywhere in the original game um it I mean, it doesn't like there's just kind of an implied like, oh, there's a bad guy and the Octolings are working for him and stuff like that. Um, it's all it's all implications in Fanon in the base game right. is the thing. And this kind of elaborates on some of that. Hmm. Like, for example, this telephone here who decides that his normal speech will not be able to connect with the hip young youth of today and decides to be um, crack a lacking yo. Isn't this not square? Wiggity wham moo wazzle. <laughs> Word. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah, this this definitely not suspicious talking telephone tells us that if we get all of the different things, that's what they're called. They're the things. Uh, we can go to the promised land. He also poops out a, <laughs> a tablet somehow. Okay. Yeah. Of course, the game doesn't lose its signature sense of humor as well in that, you know, kind of like lame 90s cool that's still kind of cool, but is also simultaneously lame, but <laughs> well, still whole, cool this, 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 kind this, of this vibe. Whole, this, whole, this whole subset of the single player is very late 80s through mid 90s focused in its references. 
Because yeah. it's mostly 80s and 90s uh, hip-hop and pop. Yeah, like the the above-ground stuff does have kind of a 90s vibe to it. But, like, you can tell with the music, especially. Like, it's all, like, kind of pop and alt-rock. Whereas the influences here are underground, literally and figuratively. <laughs> with stuff like 90s hip-hop and stuff like that. Well, I mean, the, the uh, I remember the... Uh... Reveal trailer for this expansion, Pearl and Marina were literally just Tupac and Notorious B.I.G. Yeah, <laughs> um, which is actually, it's funnier in Japanese because um, Pearl's wearing B.I.G.'s crown. And in Japanese, her name is Hime, which is princess. So she's a princess wearing his crown, <laughs> which is just really, really funny. Um, <laughs> I don't remember if there was anything similar going on with Marina, but I guess people were just oogling over her in that outfit so you know oh my god this guy i i hate cq i hate this little adorable blob with every ounce of my being why is that because he murders you <laughs> you get better what you have stated a true fact about this commentary ryan test failed boom <laughs> you blow up yeah, he's sort of the not gladys in some regards He's not as omnipresent as GLaDOS, but he fills a somewhat similar role at points. Oh, actually. He's kind of like if GLaDOS had an intern in Portal. <laughs> he, like, runs the experiments and, like, oversees everything, but he's not in charge. So, oh, his name is Sea Cucumber. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh. So if there's ever a mission with a specific objective, like protect the orb or put the eight ball in the hole or whatever. And if you fail, he'll literally blow you up and you die and you have to start over. AO5. This guy is ruthless and out of and out for blood. AO5. Is that like AO3 except with even worse search functionality? Uh -huh, I'm the only one that's going to No, uh, it's, just the, it's just the stage and sub level. <laughs> I'm the only one yeah, that the did. entire game uh, is kind of set up in terms of a, um, it's basically a, subway a subway tunnel. station. Yeah, it's a subway system. So, you, it's somewhat non-linear in the sense that you can choose where you want to go. Yeah, you can make your own path. You, yeah. And there's only a couple of levels that are strictly mandatory. Um, like, <laughs> obviously this one and then the ones that lead to the specific um, thing. Yeah. But once you branch the game out enough, if you're having a lot of trouble with a specific mission, you can just find a different way around. Or you can um, have Pearl and Marina complete it for you as well. They really didn't want to lock the ability to play the Octolings in, 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 in multiplayer behind completing the game. So the game is fairly generous with letting you skip stuff super guide style if you just want to finish it and get the ability to play them in multiplayer. But trying to complete every stage does get fairly difficult if you're trying to do everything the legitimate way you get a you get a special outfit so if you do when you so. say play the octolings in multiplayer what exactly do you mean you They're get to be skin. an octoling in the multiplayer yeah, like it's just a character skin yeah they have different hair their eyes are slightly different uh their animations are slightly different but they play the exact exactly same, the same way they don't even do anything uh, like make them left-handed versus right-handed, which has some minor, minor, minor gameplay stuff, depending on, like, which hot walls you can peek around and stuff like that. Like, uh, they really do p play exactly the same way. Well, I mean, who are you playing as when you're not playing as the Octoling? You're playing the as the Inkling. <laughs> uh, what's the difference? They're a squid. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. One's a squid and one's an octopus. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's it's basically like playing Sonic versus Tails in Sonic Two, like it's just like, a cosmetic yeah, thing. Yeah. But like, imagine if in Sonic, if Sonic Two first came out, right, and you couldn't play as Tails, people would be like, "Why can't I play as Tails? It looks like he plays just like Sonic. I want to do it." And that's what people thought when they first saw the Octolings back in Splatoon One. They were they were in a lot of the missions, and the idea was they play just like you, so it's emulating how a multiplayer match would go and people just thought that their outfits and aesthetic was really cool so they wanted to be able to play as them it was probably the most requested feature of splatoon up through splatoon one's 
like full life cycle and the first year of Splatoon 2. Uh, this game came out about a year or so after Splatoon 2's base game came out. So people were kind of thinking about it. If I remember correctly, there was some data in both games that hinted at them making it playable. But this was the first uh, time they actually were. Yeah. And in Splatoon 2, it looks like you can be either Inkling or Octoling from the start without having to do anything extra. So uh, I assume you mean three. Did I say t- God? I'm the worst person (laughs) in the entire planet. We'll see you next time.